okay, going to refute the heresy of annihilism or annihilationism, different titles for it, but this is a heresy which stems from the Seventh-day Adventist church, uh, so-called church, it's actually a cult, that was started by a woman, which, you know, the Bible says that women aren't supposed to be speaking in the church, and there are not, there's not a single female prophet in the Bible, but the Seventh-day Adventism has this heresy of annihilationism, that basically hell and the lake of fire are not eternal punishments, they're just, you get burned up and then you're just disinte disintegrated, you become ashes, and that's it. This is a heresy because the Bible teaches that hell, and which the lake of fire also comes after hell, but hell and the lake of fire are eternal punishments. So I'm going to go over some scriptures, a couple of verses that refute this heresy of annihilationism from the Seventh-day Adventist uh, movement. So first of all, Jesus Christ himself refers to hell as a, quote, everlasting fire. Matthew chapter 18, verse number 18. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life, halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Second point, at the judgment of the nations, at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, Jesus refers to hell again as a everlasting fire. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Then shall he all say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. And a couple verses down, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 46, Jesus refers to hell as an everlasting punishment. This is at the judgment of the nations. Matthew chapter 25, verse 46. And then you shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Next point, those who take the mark of the beast go to hell, where they are described as having, quote, no rest day nor night forever and ever. Revelation 14, 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. No rest, day nor night. The smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever not annihilation. Final point, Satan, after the battle of Gog and Magog, is cast into the lake of fire, which comes after hell, forever and ever. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented night, day and night, forever and ever. So we see this theme over and over again. Hell is an everlasting fire, an everlasting punishment. You know, the smoke of the torment ascends up forever and ever. They have no rest day nor night. And then it talks about how they're tormented forever and ever. Uh, that flies in the face of annihilationism, which says, oh, you just go to hell, and then you burn up, and then that's it. If you think about it, you know, atheists or, you know, uh, left-wingers, liberals, social liberals, they, you know, they would love a doctrine like that, quite frankly, because... You know, atheists will say, oh, you know, God's so cruel, you know, why would he put somebody in hell for all of eternity? You know, they, they want a God that basically will just maybe put them in hell and then maybe just burn them up and that's it. You know, when in reality, compared to the holy, sinless, pure God, man, you know, just one sin is enough to land you in eternal lake of fire for all of eternity. So annihilationism is actually denial of the righteousness of God because God in his righteousness cannot allow sin. That's why he had to send his son to go down on the cross, to pay for sins. Because one sin will end you up in the lake of fire for all of eternity, which, of course, again, comes after hell. That's why in the Old Testament they had to do animal sacrifices to cover their sins. You know, and that's a whole other subject on its own of dispensational salvation. Not going to cover that. But dispensational salvation, it is biblical. I'll just throw that out there. But annihilation, is, is a, as I said before, is a denial of the righteousness of God. Because it's saying that basically... Sinners don't go to hell for all eternity. It's just they're burned up. So it's not the righteous punishment that God 
clearly lays out in the Word of God for sinners if they're not covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Basically, covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, you're, all your sins are forgiven, uh, you go to heaven. There's not soul sleep either. Soul sleep is another uh, heresy from Seventh-day Adventism. But, yeah, hell is an everlasting fire. For those who are not covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, who have not put their faith in, in Jesus Christ, you know, it's an everlasting punishment. It's not soul sleep or it's not annihilationism. It's a heresy. So don't be deceived by Seventh-day Adventism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.